Hey everyone, here's my attempt at making a couple hopefully quick and simple videos on my approach to modeling a guitar neck in Fusion 360, more specifically a Fender style electric guitar neck. Um, you might notice right off the bat that my UI is not um, the standard UI, or at least I don't know if, what the standard UI is anymore. So if you want to give this a shot, this is under your preferences. And if you go to the preview, you'll see under UI preview. And this kind of takes everything from the old style and puts it in a new tab style, which I find to be a lot more clean and easier to use and more efficient. So if you want to give it a shot, do so. If you want to use your old um, UI, following along won't be too, too difficult. Instead of having modeling and patch over here, you now kind of have solid and surface and sheet metal and tools. And under tools, you have your add-ins now, which used to be kind of over here. And uh, for add-ins, I've actually been working on a guitar add-in for Fusion 360 to help really automate all the difficult computations that a uh, precise fretboard would actually have. Um, so I'll have a link in the description to that file if you want to download that zip and then extract the folder out of that zip into... A, um, another folder of your choice please do so um, and then once you've done that come back here you can go to tools add-ins or hit shift s and this will open up your uh, scripts and add-ins folder and then if you go to add-ins click on this green plus uh, find your file here or wherever you extracted it click on the folder don't worry about going into the folder hit select folder and it should be in here somewhere and then once you have it select it if you want to run it on startup uh, select this and then hit run and then you'll notice you get prompted saying that the guitar engine light has been added to the create and model workspace this needs to be updated I no longer have a create or model workspace it would be my design solid and keep in mind this is a beta version this is a work in progress it's not the prettiest uh, script so if things don't work or things don't work properly, I apologize. Um, and if you find anything that doesn't work, let me know and I'll do what I can to fix it. Once you see this, hit OK. Go back to your solid tab. And now you'll see a new icon called Guitar Engine Light. Select that and you'll get a new window over here. And uh, this kind of has all the, the makings for the initial part of the guitar neck. Here you have your standard. In your metric, I've realized that uh, these don't properly convert when you go to metric. Um, that's something I'll have to fix. But on the fretboard, you'll see that all works here. So I live in the United States, so I'm going to work in the Imperial system, back to English. Um, these are all pretty straightforward. Number of frets you want, scale length, again, being a Fender style, 25.5 inch scale length. This is your uh, distance between your nut and your bridge. This is very important. Um, your guitar length and your headstock length, these aren't as important right now. Um, you can always adjust these later after you've produced your, uh, your fretboard. Number of strings, and then the bridge and the nut spacing. What these mean are, this is the distance between the high E and the low E string, um, not the actual distance between the end and the end of the nut or the bridge. So this gives you the actual string spacing. And then the nut to post, nut to post if, uh, distance is from the nut to the center of your first tuning machine. And then your center post hole diameter, this is the actual hole that will get cut into your headstock for the tuning machine to slide into. And this is the actual the uh, machine post diameter. This is the diameter of the actual post that the string wraps around. And then the uh, machine post hole spacing. This is a dis this is your distance center to center between your uh, tuning machines. Uh, again, these can be changed afterward if you decided you want to. This isn't these aren't the measurements you want. If you go over to fretboard, now you have your nut length and your end length. These are the lengths of the taper of your guitar fretboard. So this is where the nut is. This is where your fretboard would end. 
Um, you can find this, if you know what style nut you want to use or style guitar neck you want to emulate, these numbers are pretty simple, to um, easy to find. Uh, right now these are kind of standard. And then if you want to do, say, an acoustic style or classical style fretboard or just you don't want to have a radius at all, you can select the uh, create uh, flat fretboard and that will make sure there's no radius. Later on I hope to uh, have an option here where you can just have select flat, compound, or straight radius. As of right now this is set up in a compound configuration with a seven and a quarter inch radius at the nut and then a 12 inch radius at the um, end of the fretboard. Uh, that might be a big, I don't, this is just, this isn't for actual production so I don't know if that's actually um, a proper uh, compound radius. And then the height is, this is the overall height of your fretboard. And then the create fillet radius, if you have this selected, this will create a nice rounded end, um, rounded edges for the end of your fretboard. And then the created end curve, this complements your radius where this just gives where the uh, bridge would be. Um, I mean, your first pickup next to the uh, guitar neck, this will give you a nice curve. There, if you don't want any of that, you can uh, toggle those off, or later on you can physically or manually go through and cut that out. And then fret cuts. If you want to have actual geometry cut into your fretboard, keep this uh, selected. If you don't, turn that off. None of this will apply. And then with this, this is your tang width. This is the actual part of the fret that gets pressed or hammered into the uh, fretboard. This is the depth, so this is how deep it gets pressed in there. These are, I believe these are pretty standard. You can find uh, these kind of measurements. If you go to Stumac or just um, do a Google search for fret wire, typically they'll give you all this information. And then the uh, crown width and crown height, this is the actual shape of your, your fret. Uh, blind frets, if you have this toggled on, what that is is that means the frets won't go all the way through. They won't be visible from the side of the fretboard. So if you'd like that, keep that toggle or to toggle that on. If you're not too worried about it, don't worry about it. And then your nut slot width and nut slot depth. Um, this can be changed easily. This is a. This is just for a, a a cut for where your your nut would go. And then if you want fret markers selected, create fret markers. These are going to be standard circle. Um, nothing too crazy here. Just the size in the depth and then the uh, fret marker spacing right here this is for your 12th this is for your octaves your 12th and your 24th uh, this is just the distance that will be between the two uh, markers on your 12th and 24th fret so once you get the uh, the measurements you think you want to roll with hit select fretboard it's going to take a minute to compute it's doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes over here you'll notice it's kind of uh, populating everything okay so that didn't take too long thankfully um, so this is what you get from all those uh, all those measurements so that really takes a lot of the guesswork out of it takes a lot of the hard work out of it um, you have a fretboard component let's open that up and you have your bodies in here and you have your fretboard 22 frets so in case you forget how many frets you uh, initially selected it'll populate here and again like I said since we selected to cut frets you get that actual physical cut there which I'm not sure if actually that matters at all when it comes to cam and the extension is just a forward little forward piece to work with if you want it or not you can toggle that on or off it's just there in case you want it and then let's go to your sketches see what's all going on down here so your fretboard curves, this is kind of what's driving the overall shape and the taper of your fretboard. Um, your fret lines, these are showing your actual spacing for your frets are. These are pretty handy later on. Fret slots, these are just the, the um, sketch that cut that uh, tang depth and tang width. Uh, profile, that's for your nut. Inlays your inlays, uh, default, marker, uh, default marker positions. This is here just to show you your third, your fifth, your seventh, your ninth, your twelfth, and uh, so on. 
just to help you uh, know where you're working on the fretboard or in case you want to go back later on and do your own inlay work you know you have um, something to base it off of to be properly centered you have your frets maybe oh yeah so here these if you want to go through later on I, I can show you how to very tediously go through and turn these into geometry that follow the curve of your fretboard that's a something I want to work on still to automate but haven't gotten there yet and this is where you got your your tang width your tang height and then your uh, crown height and crown width information for and then your fret lines these are just uh, your fret lines reference projected down and they give you the proper spacing and these are the proper width for your guitar neck uh, fretboard and then you have another component down here, which are your strings. These are going to be very handy later, um, and also for your tuning holes. So all that information is there. It's a good way to get started. Um, hopefully that saves hours and hours of work. Um, I'm going to come back and show you how, from here, how I would uh, start working on an actual neck.